be surprised, I think, in regards to the breadth and depth of what SHI is doing, uh, not only in the cloud, but in the technology industry as well. So I want to give everybody a quick overview of, of SHI, who we are, what we do, uh, talk about our infrastructure as a service uh, offerings that we have, some of the success stories. I know there were some questions here earlier in regards to what our customers doing with cloud, and, and I think you'll get a, a great sense of what customers are doing in our cloud and some of the possibilities that you may see uh, for your own company. Uh, talk about what we're doing for both backup as a service and DR, and, and, and again, some of the, the uh, use cases we have and success stories uh, around uh, DR and, and backup as a service. Sound good? All right, let's get started here. So SHI, we exited 2012 uh, in excess of $4.5 billion in revenue. Uh, we are a global provider of IT solutions, hardware, software, uh, and services. We've been in business for over 24 years uh, in the industry. What's interesting about the company is uh, the company has grown organically over that 24-year history. And there's been no acquisitions. Uh, what's even more interesting is, is there's no long-term or short-term debt to the company. And so when you look at the investment that a company needs to make in regards to cloud services, we're well positioned to be able to do that and provide that um, out to our customers. Because clearly what we see going on is customers are are moving from this CapEx model of buying hardware and software and standing it up uh, in their data center to an OpEx model where they turn on a light switch, in essence, and get their application and services that they need. And so wherever our customers are along uh, that journey to the cloud, we want to be able to provide those services to them. And, and obviously, like everything else, nothing typically is going to be 100%. In some cases, yes. But usually there's going to be a blend of both CapEx and OpEx expenditures, and we want to be able to provide that um, out to our customer base. One, one, you know, let me just go back here. One other thing. One of the interesting things um, about SHI is from a company standpoint is, you know, within the, I'll say the DNA of the company is innovation. And, and, you, and what's interesting is you look back over time, for example, in the early 1990s, SHI was the first company actually to do drop ship. Now today everybody's doing it, including the, you know, the big box stores. But as our competitors were building warehouses and stocking inventory, we were working out drop ship with, with our customers. What's also interesting, and this may be also applicable to everybody else, because most IT shops never have enough money. And so one of the services we provide out to our customers is something we call Polaris. It's a software asset management uh, service. And what's interesting is, is the licensing across every software company is different. And it's probably changing every six to 12 months. And it's almost it's probably virtually impossible to keep up with um, all of the changes that are going on across those different software companies on your own. And so what we can come in and do is a software assessment for you, look at your usage and how you're licensing those software applications. And typically what we have found is we're saving about 30 cents on the dollar for large enterprise customers. So if you're looking for freeing up some you know, additional money within your IT organization and you want to fund something else, stop by our booth here, talk with our folks about what we're doing around software asset management, and I think we can help you out. So let's talk about the service, infrastructure as a service and what we're providing out to a customer. So if you look in the uh, upper uh, right-hand side of the slide, our multi-tenant cloud offering is what a lot of other companies refer to as public cloud. We call it multi-tenant because we currently are today not a, a credit card swipe service, but we actually onboard you. So it protects us from any denial of service attack that uh, could happen because nobody knows uh, where that portal is. And you get on and you provision those virtual machines just like you would uh, a, a normal public cloud. We also will take that same technology, we'll stand it up uh, within your data center for a private cloud or dedicated cloud within the four walls of your data center. And then obviously you have that traditional burst capability back into a multi-tenant or public cloud to give you that hybrid cloud solution. One of the things that we're doing that's very unique, that's caught a lot of excitement in the marketplace and with our customers is what we call managed private cloud. You can think of the MPC or managed private cloud as a cloud appliance. The hardware and software that provides the virtual machines, we actually put on your premise or colo of choice. We own it, we manage it for you. So now when you start looking at a hybrid cloud solution, it starts to be pretty interesting. 
because now you can have virtual machines in this MPC solution that can burst back to our multi-tenant cloud, or if you have a private or dedicated cloud, you can now deploy these MPCs around the world and manage them just like we do from our own cloud center and then still be able to burst back into our multi-tenant cloud. So it really starts to give you some very creative options in regards to looking at uh, hybrid cloud solutions and how to deploy them across your enterprise. We are also a SaaS provider. What's interesting is, is not only in our multi-tenant or public cloud do we have software providers providing the software um, out to their customers, uh, but in that MPC solution, the way a lot of software is licensed today, that software has to reside on your premise. So that actually ends up being a very interesting software platform now to be able to deploy solutions um, anywhere in the world behind a customer's firewall. And we are also a cloud reseller. So we resell other cloud solutions besides having our own. So whether it's Microsoft, uh, Mac, McAfee, Symantec, uh, you'll see us uh, launch Amazon here probably in the next month along with Rackspace. So we will be uh, a, a global uh, cloud provider with multiple um, services, including our own, and we believe we have to be the best cloud provider in the industry if customers are going to select our own. So managed private cloud created a lot of interest in the marketplace. What does it look like? Uh, we have a V100, V400, and V2000, kind of a small, medium, and large offering uh, into the marketplace, 100 virtual machines, 400 virtual uh, machines, and 2,000 virtual machines. Again, this is a cloud appliance. Typically, the, the V100, V400, um, from time to order to up and running in your data center is three weeks. So it is ready to go. Uh, you turn it on, and you have, uh, in essence, a cloud in a box. So let's talk about some of the successes that we've had in the marketplace. Tryon Worlds, for those gamers, probably know that very well. Um, Defiance was the latest game that they deployed out in the marketplace. They actually use our, our multi-tenant cloud offering for doing software testing. And they spin up about 8,000 virtual CPUs at a time to do software tests. And so they, in essence, will test a portion of their game for a couple of hours, shut that down, spin up another portion of their game, and they'll shut that down um, uh, and then you know, test up a, a, another part of their game. So it really gives them a, a great option of not having to invest in all that hardware and software to do tests. And when that game, they're done and they deploy that game out into the marketplace, well, then what do they do with that hardware? You know, it sits around in the market, it sits around their data center, it's not being used. So here they're only paying for what they need, when they need it, and they don't have to pay anything when they don't need it. LabVantage. Um, LabVantage um, is uh, a company that makes laboratory information management systems, or LIN systems. Um, these are really uh, systems that will uh, uh, collect data off of instru instrumentation and then um, uh, run analytics on, on that uh, data. And so, for example, if you're a furniture manufacturer and you manufacture you know, these chairs uh, here in the auditorium, you'll actually put those in an environmental chamber and you'll age those um, through a heating and cooling cycle. And so what you'll want to look at is make sure that the, the, the fumes that are given off uh, by that chair through that aging process don't harm your customers. Well, in that particular application, it's nice to actually have an MPC within the four walls of your data center because then you're, you're sure the data never leaves um, your company's uh, data center. Um, but in other applications like training, um, they'll have their customers uh, train up on their um, uh, uh, applications and they'll come in from all over the world at the same time. And they'll spin up virtual machines to, to, to run those uh, training sessions that they have. The other question we always get is about scalability and how large will your, your, your cloud scale? Can you handle the bandwidth you know, that we have? Um, last June, uh, the transit of Venus happened and we partnered with both NASA and Columbus State University to actually gather uh, the data that was coming in from five locations from around the world to be able to display those out to the scientists uh, and uh, students and citizens uh, around the world to be able to watch um, uh, Venus uh, transit across the sun, which is the, uh, uh, the next time that that will happen is 100 years uh, from that date. So obviously, uh, you think about a worldwide mission-critical application, lots of bandwidth, lots of storage, uh, lots of CPU. 
um, clearly, um, you probably can't get uh, much more critical than, than that. And then, you know, the other, th the other question you get is, well, what about security? And so, you know, we believe in regards to what we do with multi-tenant cloud from a security standpoint, because uh, we don't have a public-facing portal. We do uh, data encryption at rest. We also do data encryption across the network, so any data in flight is encrypted as well. Um, we believe we have one of the most secure multi-tenant clouds in, in the marketplace today. But um, uh, even with that, some customers say, you know what, I want my own dedicated vCore within, within your data center. Uh, and um, this financial firm uh, here in New York, uh, they've been growing through uh, lots of acquisitions. They've been running out of data center space uh, here in, in New York City. And as you know, uh, real estate's very expensive, so instead of uh, enlarging their data center, they decided to move their software development um, out to our cloud center um, that we have in, in New Jersey. They've actually run dedicated networking into our facility, so they've got dual fiber lines uh, coming in. Uh, to give um, um, them uh, multiple points of, of access. So that's what I have in regards to what we're doing from an infrastructure as a service standpoint. And let me jump to uh, now uh, back up in DR to give you a sense of uh, some of the solutions that we're delivering in the marketplace as well. So um, obviously Hurricane Sandy hit here um, and, and caused a, a big devastating ef effect to uh, uh, many businesses and citizens here. Uh, the question I have is, does anybody know what 124 has in relationship to uh, Hurricane Sandy? Anybody? Anybody got a sense? Okay. So 124, number of years the New York Stock Exchange uh, has been, has been uh, the last time it was closed for two consecutive days uh, due to a weather event. 820. Anybody ha know what 820 has in, in, in regards to Hurricane Sandy? It's the diameter of the storm when it came ashore just uh, south of, uh, of Atlantic City. And it really changed how people are looking at DR because uh, the magnitude and size of that storm is like nothing anybody you know, has seen before. And so the question is, is, is your business ready? So we have a number of um, uh, backup as a service offerings in the marketplace. We've partnered with EMC to deliver those solutions. And the, the first solution is just a pure backup solution. So when you look at, I'll say, laptop, de uh, desktop, uh, and server, uh, we put an agent out on those devices. You can back up into uh, our multi-tenant um, Avamar um, uh, environment and protect your data. So it's an OPEX expense for backup. You can get out of the backup business uh, at a very low cost point and be ensure that your data is there. Um, the, the second solution we have uh, is where we can put either an Avamar uh, or a data domain on your premise. Uh, backup uh, your data locally uh, to those systems and then uh, replicate that data uh, back to uh, our data center. And that can either be to uh, a dedicated Avamar or a multi-tenant Avamar. For those folks that know Avamar, uh, that does uh, data encryption in flight and data encryption at rest. So a lot of folks will, will opt for uh, the multi-tenant Avamar environment. Um, we do have uh, customers with, with uh, dedicated Avamars due to, again, uh, uh, data sensitivity. Uh, and then um, data domain, uh, most customers are, are going with uh, dedicated uh, data domain systems um, in our data center because it does not do uh, encryption. And then um, because of uh, uh, how Avamar and data domain are designed, uh, and you look at data domain, great for SQL databases. And, and so a lot of times uh, to provide, I'll say, the, the fastest and back, best backup solution, you'll combine both Avamar and data domain on your premise uh, for backup and then replicate uh, back to uh, our data center. Um, this is a full um, OPEX model. So we don't make you buy uh, the data domain and Avamar that goes on-prem. So the entire service is an OPEX expense. So you can mix and match and, and do whatever what makes sense uh, for, for your business. For those folks that have uh, used Avamar and data domain, uh, it can be a fairly complex uh, environment to use. And so um, we just announced about a month ago that we'll be deploying a very simple and easy user interface that'll sit on top of uh, Avamar and data domain. 
uh, and give you that simple and easy to use GUI interface that really so many folks want to have in, in a backup environment without getting into the details. Um, our plan is, is to deploy this uh, for DR as well. And so you'll see a very simple and easy to use, uh, I'll say push button um, DR capability. Since your data is residing with SHI, a lot of customers have asked us, well, geez, you also have cloud. I want to be, when I declare a disaster, I want to be able to spin up virtual machines and then be able to access the data that I have on, uh, on your premise. And so this, uh, this environment here will provide that for you. Um, this, again, is running in our booth, and you can certainly come by and see that here uh, this week. So let's talk about some of the use cases that we have. Um, Gila, uh, they're based down in Texas. They are a government... Um, uh, contractor. They're really a, a government collections agency. Uh, they were an existing uh, V400 uh, customer of ours. Uh, they, they had, they've kind of been through the same thing a lot of other um, uh, companies uh, have been through in that SMB space, that small, medium-sized business, where they've seen growth over the last 10 years, uh, but they haven't invested in their data center or their infrastructure, and so they were trying to figure out, you know, what do I do? Uh, so they went to a V400, uh, they also realized that the Avamar that they had on site didn't have enough capacity. And so what we ended up doing was buying back that Avamar grid from them, providing an Avamar, a new Avamar grid that gave them enough capacity that they needed to, to have, and um, in essence replicated their data from that Avamar grid that was on their premise back to our, our cloud center. Uh, all of that wrapped up in, in a monthly OPEX expense for them. Again, no capital outlay up front. Uh, RHD, Resources for Human Development, they're down in Philadelphia. Um, they uh, had an existing backup solution, very complex, uh, very difficult to use. Uh, they were afraid if uh, people left um, the company, um, they wouldn't be able to get their backups done. And what they found is, is their costs were increasing on a monthly basis. Um, this was an example where um, they did have SQL databases. Uh, this is a combination of both Avamar and Data Domain on their premise, where they um, do backup, and then they replicate um, to our cloud or back to our data center uh, in case if something was to happen to their facility. So it allowed them, again, not to have any cash outlay, get their uh, backup and costs under control. Um, the last use case I have is uh, a major uh, law firm. They had um, offices in, in five different states across the United States. Uh, they had really a, a multitude of, of different backup solutions that uh, they were really um, uh, struggling uh, with, and they were seeing lots of failures of their backup. So very complex, very difficult to use, uh, and um, with, with lots of failures. And so what we ended up doing is, is putting uh, multiple Avamar nodes uh, in the different offices around, around the U.S. Uh, with um, backup uh, to actually a dedicated uh, Avamar node in our, our data center. And this is an example where, uh, again, customer data, very sensitive customer data, uh, they felt even though you had encryption in flight and encryption at rest, they needed to um, uh, ensure that their data was protected even a little bit further. So again, uh, giving them option. And so when you look at um, the offerings uh, that, that SHI has in, in the marketplace and the, and the benefits that we provide is really providing customers choice, giving the broadest portfolio we can, both from an infrastructure as a service standpoint as well as backup as a service. Uh, fully OPEX uh, from a cost standpoint. Um, we do have customers, by the way, um, uh, that mix uh, both um, uh, OPEX and CAPEX. So some customers prefer to actually buy the the Avamar data domain that's on premise, and they just pay for a monthly service fee. Uh, we'll probably, in the next month, uh, announce a major NFL um, uh, team uh, that will be using our backup as a service uh, offering as well. So that'll be backing up their player videos and um, uh, tapes of, that they have. And so, um, uh, you know, the intent is give this broad uh, portfolio of solutions, both Apex or OPEX or CAPEX. Um, uh, uh, costs, and then pr ease of use for us is, is, is very important. World-class service really kind of ties in with, with ease of use, 
And so not only have that classic 800 number for world-class support, but then provide that simple, easy-to-use uh, interface um, that customers uh, so much desire, all backed up by a financially solid uh, company with over uh, uh, 1,300 uh, of the best uh, sales executives uh, we believe that are, that are here uh, uh, w within any company. So uh, with that, um, happy to take some questions from the audience. Coming right up, as they say. Sorry about that. Ah, you see, the house lights are up. I can see you. There is a hand right over there. Coming up. Hi. Uh, with the VNX series um, systems, say if are, are they modular in a sense to where, say, if I wanted to start it out with like a, a V100, then maybe like six months we could want to scale up to a V400. We could just add more, add more racks to it. Um, yes. Yeah. So, for example, the, the the V100 is upgradable to uh, the V400, where we'll add both more storage as well as more blade servers uh, in, into that cage. Okay, and that can scale all the way up to the 2000 as well or higher? Um, the, the, the V400 uh, will typically be a, a box swap to a, a V2000. Typically what we see is uh, customers going with multiple V400s uh, and um, scaling that way. And, and typically what we try to do is get customers in at the, the base of you know, one of those platforms, about 30%, and give them headroom you know, from, a, from a growth perspective. Short, sharp, and shiny answer. Any more questions for Richard? No hands waving. So let us instead thank him, please. Richard Place, Great. SHI. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.